Hello everyone, this is Game Frost. In today's video, I'll be showcasing the R9 350, a sub $20 GPU I found on eBay. Weirdly enough, this GPU has a mobile chip inside. Let's find out. The R9 350 is an interesting GPU. According to multiple sources, this is a mobile chip that's embedded into a desktop PCB. It is based on the GCN 1.0 architecture and its lineup is named Cape Verde. Released in 2016, it features 1500 transistors on a 28 nanometer process. 512 stream processors, 32 TMUs, and 16 ROPs makes it compatible for light gaming. Good thing that it comes with at least 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory in 2022. The core clocks are pretty low in today's standards as they hit 925 MHz and the memory at a respectable 1125 MHz. It requires no additional power whatsoever and it comes with 3 display outputs, 2 display ports and 1 DVI port. Finally, it can run all DX11 games with a DirectX 12 software's level support which is really good. Specs aside, it's time to look deeper into the graphics card to verify if it's actually a mobile laptop GPU. Usually, GPU manufacturers would label the model number on its die. After taking the heatsink apart, I've noticed that both the heatsink and GPU have dried up thermal paste. It's a good thing I looked into it because chances are the GPU is going to thermal throttle. Removing the thermal paste was a hassle as I have to apply pressure to the GPU to take it off completely. I felt scared for a moment but it was fine after testing. Checking the die, I went online and what I found was just ridiculous. Turns out that this GPU is actually an R7450, an OEM GPU made for obviously workstations. I went to Tech Power Up to see if it was true, the specs were on point. So it made me skeptical that it may not be a mobile chip after all, more on this later. Now it was time, it was time to apply the thermal application. The Arctic MX4 is one of my favorite thermal solutions. The line method is still one of the best in my opinion, please don't judge me. I also added thermal pads for better cooling I guess. The GPU was then put back together and after turning it on the PC, it booted just fine. It's now time for the driver installation process. The first thing I did was to head over on to AMD's website and I clicked on their downloads and support tab then on drivers, and then I scrolled down to find the R9 M360 driver. I was a bit impressed to see that AMD supported this card until 2022. This is a good indicator that most games should be able to run properly. Launching the installer was fine and no issues were present. I restarted my PC and it was time to benchmark the card. Although I still find it weird that it reports itself as an R93 M360 instead of an R7450. But even when I searched for it on AMD's website, it wasn't present at all except for Dell's website. So does that mean this GPU is actually a mobile GPU slapped on a PCB? Honestly, I can't be so sure due to AMD's cursed lineups in the past. For testing, I will show 3D Mark Time Spy and Fire Strike. Ida64 and Geekbench 5. There are 8 games in total that I have tested. This segment will not have any commentary, but please enjoy the rest of the video.
I hide, Hellraiser? Let's go. In conclusion, I believe this GP is worth the $23 I've spent. It's better than the RFI 240 and HD 7570 by a mile, but even then I would spend a little extra money for something like the Fire Pro W5000, which performs like an RX 550 or the Xbox One. I've seen the thermals on this GPU and I can't lie, it's not really good, but after looking at the voltages, it is way too high for what is considering how small this heatsink is built on the PCB. The games did run just fine but some of them needs a big resolution drop such as Cyberpunk. I'm more impressed that it can run GTA 5 at native 1080p with FXAA even though it's on normal settings. The game is really optimized so that's a good thing. Overall it's a cool little card to play with and it should fit in most systems if not all even when the power supply unit is bad. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy holidays.